Earlier, I spoke to Barbara Slavine, and he was a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council in Washington and a contributor to foreignpolicy.com. And Nabila Ramdani, who's a freelance journalist for The Guardian and The Daily News in Egypt. And I started by asking Nabila, what's next for the country? What's for sure is for now we have a military dictatorship which is uh, effectively ruling the country. It's not a, a good transition uh, for Egypt. I mean, we, we've seen thousands of people fighting for uh, genuine democratic change, and uh, that's not what they have at the moment. They certainly have other demands that, needs to, uh, that need to be met before they can properly move on to um, a more democratic uh, structure. Barbara, perhaps the question ought to be, what are the options for Egypt now? Well, I'm, I'm a little less pessimistic. I think after what Egypt has been through, that uh, they will see a transition to something that certainly will be more democratic than what they had under Mubarak. I doubt it will be perfect, but then no democracy is. I think the, the key will be, you know, does the military reach out, start to have proper negotiations with real representatives of, of these groups, and do they lift the emergency law? That will be key. If they lift that law, then for the first time it will be legal for people to, to join together and organize politically. Nabil, is there mm. any chance of that? My only concern is I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very skeptical of the role of the army and this uh, council of, of, of army generals that we need to watch very closely. After all, they are former President Mubarak's uh, backbone. Uh, and that's why I think uh, the Egyptians largely are also skeptical of uh, what their uh, genuine intentions are. But uh, Barbara is quite right to say that, you know, um, imperative measures need, need to be taken, uh, like the lift of the state of emergency, which has been imposed since 1981 when Mubarak came to power, but also the dissolution of parliament. Ninety percent of the members of parliament are uh, representatives of the ruling uh, parties. And is that what Egyptians on the whole want? Do they want the dissolution of parliament, Nabilo? Are those the main issues? Because we heard them at Tiria Square crying out for freedom. That can mean so many things. The necessary step towards freedom is to see the members of the old regime gone. And that also involves bringing about constitutional amendments which would pave the way for democratic change and so that, so that all parties and all candidates can uh, run for free and transparent uh, elections in September. At the moment, some parties are still banned, like the Muslim Brotherhood, for example. Is it possible, Barbara, to get rid of everybody from the former regime? That's one of the intractable problems uh, I recall with the coalition in Iraq, they found that, well, almost everybody that had a, a political uh, leaning had some connection to the Ba'ath Party. Now, I, I really don't think it's necessary to get rid of, of all the members of, of the previous regime. I think there were a lot of technocrats who were part of that government because they had no, no alternative. A lot of capable people who were involved in uh, economic reforms, for example. Uh, no, I don't think that's that's really going to be necessary. But what is necessary is that one sees uh, proper negotiations uh, between the military, the the, the current uh, minister, ministers of various, uh, w which have been kept in power. I mean, they've said that the current civilian government remains uh, in control. That's what the military has said. So we need to see a process of negotiations take place. So America should play a role in what happens in Egypt next, Barbara? Yes, I think so. I think it should should play a uh, the sort of role that uh, President Obama mentioned that that the U.S. is here if if help is requested from the U.S. I mean, the United States has a lot of contacts, obviously not just with the military, but with civil society in Egypt. There have been democracy promotion programs that were beefed up under George W. Bush, that provided some modest uh, sums and some counseling and advice to these various groups, and I think that should be augmented. Are, are the protesters still sceptical of America's role in the Bila, uh, g given that they were, uh, well, the American uh, administration has gone from one position to another during the course of the crisis in Egypt, but also they were, of course, had a very special relationship with President Mubarak. If you're calling for the dissolution of parliament, arguably part of that is the dissolution of the kind of relationships that they had, isn't it? It's uh, uh, highly relevant to have a dissolution of parliament given the circumstances under which it was elected. 
uh, fraudulent circumstances, and, and that's why it should be dissolved unconditionally and immediately. As far as America's role in uh, Egypt's future is concerned, I, I mean, I think it's grim irony to actually say that the, uh, the United States is a force that promotes democracy around the world. W one only needs to look at America's track record of supporting dictatorships around the world, from Latin America to the Middle East. Uh, they overthrew uh, a democratic regime in Iran, for example, to put in its place a, a, a dictatorship. So, and, and I think Egyptians are absolutely fed up of seeing America keeping very close tabs on uh, what's going on in Egypt. Uh, let's not, not forget that the uh, billions that the Americans are pouring into security in Egypt helped quell and crack down on the demonstrators. They may have got it wrong, but do you think they can play any role now in what happens next, Nabila? No, I think the only role they should play is to, uh, you know, stay away from it. I mean, the Egyptians do not interfere in American elections. Why sh should it, wor you know, work the other way around? Barbara? Well, you know, uh, I would agree with Nabila that the U.S. hasn't handled this very well. I think there's been a lot of back and forth and mixed signals, and, uh, and I frankly thought that President Obama uh, should not have appeared on television quite so often when it was clear that he didn't really know what was going on. But I, I disagree a bit on the democracy front. Uh, I think that uh, also, while the U.S. has supported plenty of dictators, it's also helped with democratic transitions in a number of countries, particularly in uh, Eastern Europe. But clearly this is going to be led by Egyptians, and they've shown very well over the last few weeks that they uh, they know where their interests lie. Arguably, what's happening in North Africa and parts of the Gulf could escalate right to a similar kind of, uh, certainly an unraveling, if you like, of the Soviet Union at the time. And I wonder, Barbara, whether we, we are, what's happened in Egypt, what's happened in Tunisia, what may or may not be happening in Algeria and Yemen, etc., whether you see that spreading right across that region. Well, I don't think it's the same. Look, you had the Soviet Union, which which had all of these various countries in its grip, and and once uh, Gorbachev made clear that he wasn't going to intervene militarily, then then we saw all of these regimes uh, begin to fall. Uh, it's very different in in North Africa and in the Middle East. However, there clearly has been uh, an impact. Uh, everybody has been glued. Uh, watching the scenes in Tahrir Square. And, uh, you know, I'm in touch with friends throughout the region in Iran. You mentioned Iran. Uh, they're all watching. Uh, we may have big demonstrations in Iran on Monday. There were demonstrations in Algeria, but they were squashed, at least for now. Uh, Yemen has seen some demonstrations, so has Jordan. I think it's going to put all of these people, all of these authoritarian leaders, on notice that they do have to listen to their people, that they do have to be responsive in some way, uh, or they will face a similar fate. Nabila, uh, you're of Algerian descent. How far do you see this revolutionary spirit spreading? What happened in, in Tunisia and, and uh, now recently in, in uh, Egypt have certainly, um, has certainly electrified uh, the Arab world and led many to ask you know, which country could be next uh, in a region where uh, there's a flammable mix of authoritarian rule and, and popular anger. And we've seen how uh, the Algerians today uh, were uh, inspired by both the Tunisian and Egyptian models. And uh, they, they, early in January, they uh, protested uh, to see the introduction of socioeconomic reforms. But now they've, they've moved beyond that. And they are asking for President uh, Bouteflika to resign. Uh, so uh, it, it, it instigated a, a culture of, of dissent and protest. And people are fearless now to uh, take to the streets and, and try to bring about uh, profound uh, political change, whether in Algeria, but or across uh, the Middle East uh, and, 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 um, and the Arab world in general. Barbara, how disconcerting is the instability in the region? Is it dangerous? Well, of course, it's dangerous, and it's very unnerving. It's unnerving for the United States. It's particularly unnerving for Israel, which has gotten used to, uh, to a situation where it had peace with Jordan, peace with Egypt. Uh, but, you know, it's, look, it's, it's absolutely necessary. Uh, I'm thinking in particular of these regimes where you have this kind of combination of, of uh, what was supposed to be a republic with, with sort of monarchical powers. Uh, this is what we saw in Egypt. It's what we see in Syria. We haven't talked about Syria yet, you know, where... 
uh, Hafez al-Assad actually managed to, to pass power to his son, something that, that Mubarak was certainly contemplating, and uh, perhaps uh, the, the leader of Yemen as well. I think these countries are the ones that, that are most vulnerable. Uh, because uh, they're supposed to be republics. They're supposed to be demo uh, democracies. People are supposed to be able to vote out the leader, and that hasn't happened. Barbara Slavina of the Atlantic Council in Washington. We also heard from Nabila Ramdani of The Guardian.